This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is a contest that we at Cards Against Humanity are running for independent game designers to submit games to us uh, so that we can throw a bunch of money at them and help them uh, live their dreams. I think it's really important for Tabletop Deathmatch to exist, not only to get independent designers sort of into the mainstream, but also so that other people can see how games are made. It's not just these games being created in the laboratory, they're part of people's lives and part of people's day-to-day -day experience and part of their own love of games. Last year's Deathmatch went great, I thought. Uh, it was a learning experience for sure. We decided to do tabletop Deathmatch again because it's really great for us and great for the independent game designers. We get to meet them and they're awesome people, and then they get to benefit from our help and experience making their games. Games are fun. That's why they're important. Charm City Blues is a crime noir cooperative game where you play as members of the Vice Squad and racing against the clock to crack the case. I'm Matt Stockwell, and I'm the creator of Charm City Blues. So I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I work full-time during the day and go to school at night. Uh, I live with my fiance and our dog, who is a Basset Hound mix, who is the best dog ever. And I design games on the side as a way to be creative and kind of get my mind off of things. Charm City Blues is a cooperative crime noir game. Uh, two to four players play in about an hour. You are members of the Charm City Vice Squad. So it's this gritty crime noir city where you move from location to location and you're trying to earn clues to solve a case. As you earn clues, you flip more case files over and kind of moves the story along. But you also have this clock ticking down. So the goal is to solve the case all before the clock strikes zero. You know, you hear a lot of interviews where game designers will say, oh, well, you know, I've been writing mechanics and rules my entire life. And I didn't do that. I've been writing stories my entire life. So the thing I wanted to do was be able to tell a story. So I wanted to make a game that felt like you were living that era and kind of going along and living in one of those stories. You know, I grew up reading Raymond Chandler and Dashiell Hammett. I grew up watching the Maltese Falcon, and I also grew up in Baltimore. Baltimore kind of has a history as a gritty city, and I thought, you know, why don't we place a crime noir game in Baltimore? But if you call a board game Baltimore Blues, nobody's really gonna like it but one of the nicknames for Baltimore is Charm City. I actually pulled inspiration from the comics I have been reading. There is this graphic novel called The Hunter. It's this gritty crime story and I just, I loved it. And the artwork in it just kind of like caught my mind, but it's also, it has a really great story. And I actually kind of draw a lot of the storytelling out of comics because in the same way as rolling a die is kind of putting you in that narrative looking at a picture is the same kind of thing i discovered tabletop deathmatch uh, in the spring when i had started doing this newest version of charm city blues and i was thinking about ways to kind of get it out there i thought it was awesome because there were a lot of new and original games out there and here are these people giving somebody a chance, you know, here's a bag of money so you can print your game. In my mind, I was like, yeah, this would be cool if I got it, but I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't betting on it. And I was actually at work uh, the day I got the email saying I was picked. And I, you know, I leave work at 3.30 and I get this email at 3.20 and I sit there at my desk and I'm like, oh man, you're kidding me. Just being picked in the top eight is a victory in itself. Uh, and to be invited to the biggest convention in board gaming and to pitch it, that to me is kind of a recognition that all of these months I've spent on this work were for something. And it's just been a pretty great experience just having the opportunity to be at Gen Con.
Hot damn. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh man, that looks awesome. This is, this is a lot of months of work that is finally paying off. I'm so happy with how it looks now. This is just great. I'm Matt Stockwell, and I am designer of Charm City Blues, which is a co-op crime noir adventure game. To begin Charm City Blues, everyone chooses their character from the Vice Squad. Each member has a unique virtue, a unique vice, specific hit point and suspicion point values, and varying crime-solving abilities, fighting, apprehension, interrogation, and research. The map is revealed from location cards, which are shuffled and laid out to form a randomized grid. This is where players find clues to advance the case and come across random encounters which will need to be cleared before a clue can be acquired. Each encounter tests one of the player's abilities. Players complete investigations and clear encounters by rolling a six-sided die and adding their character's scores in the tested ability. If the player rolls equal to or greater than the number required, they succeed. If they roll less, they fail. If a player fails to clear an encounter or an investigation, they will either lose hit points or gain suspicion points. If a player fails an encounter, they will be moved to an adjacent location and immediately end their turn. If a player runs out of hit points or racks up too many suspicion points, they are out of the game. Players can perform up to three actions on their turn. Actions include moving one space on the city grid, investigating a location, or fighting an encounter. Players can also use one of their actions to try and gain a leg up, a one-time use item that can help a player. Once a player has used all three of their actions, their turn is over for the round and the next player goes. After every player has taken their turn and the round is over, the clock counts down from 12. And where do we start? So we start with the location that is on your character card. Uh, right under the name it'll say location. The so you put your mini floor. on the location. I started the circuit court of Charm City because I'm a district attorney. I, am. I start in a secret speakeasy. Woohoo! Captain Doing Lennox. Doing heroin and playing. I'm with the police headquarters because today I'm a good detective. Chris, do you want to go first? I am the star player. Okay. So I can do up to three actions. So um, let's see, we need some money. Who are you, by the way? I am Captain Lennox. Uh, I can trade leg up cards anywhere in the board because I am a police escort. But I'm also a booze hound. If I go to Drinky Land, I'm going to go poorly. I feel like you and I don't get along. Captain, the captain and the DA. I didn't really know what to expect from a film noir style game, but I, I enjoyed playing Charm City Blues. I thought it was fun. We get the call that starts this whole fiasco. Some young punk just held up a bank downtown and is trying to disappear before anyone can ID him. We'll see about that. So we're just trying to catch a bank robber. Case one, file one. Is so it the... to catch that robber, we got to investigate we, we further have to investigate a drink and two cash. Yes. All right. Oh, Follow well, the money. And I'll go investigate that drink, let me tell you. I really liked that Charm City Blues was a storytelling game. Like, my favorite game of all time is Betrayal at House on the Hill. So when I found out this was a storytelling game, I was like, yes, this is going to be great. Unfortunately, I only have um, a one in Apprehend. So just cross your fingers. Oh, the dice, can be dice lucky. like me today. All right. So you earned a clue, yes. and then you close out the location with the closed card. Okay. And then there I can go. still keep doing yeah. things. So you have two more actions you can do. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed playing Chime City Blues. Um, it's got a very nice mechanical feel for creating a story arc. All right. So it's your turn. I am the criminal informant, Harold the Bear, <laughs> hanging out in a speakeasy, getting high on smack, and playing my beautiful trumpet. Um, I'm going to investigate that speakeasy. I'm going to investigate this drink. I need to test, interrogate, and I just need a six. I have a three because I'm really good at getting people to tell me things. He's a good informant. The dice mechanic didn't really work for me at all. It was totally dissociated from the theme and the gameplay and really didn't have fun dice decisions. It was just roll and fail or succeed. Ah, failure. Yeah. What happens? I got beat up in the you face. Got, you got beat up at the Metro this City, the face. Metro this Center Credit Union. <laughs> Successfully <laughs> investigated that fist. Credit unions don't like people. You gotta let, sometimes you just gotta let people cut line. All right, come on, big money. Three, uh, whoever I'm trying to apprehend there gets away. 
and I lose two HP. Wow, we're just getting beat up here at the yeah, credit someone union. At, someone at the bank is really violent. Guys, me. there's something <laughs> very wrong going down at this bank. I attend the police, but I'm so many moves away. Yeah, I'm pretty far. I'm gonna, too. I'm gonna investigate again. Pull it. Oh no, no, I have to fight. I have the worst fight. All right. Come I'm gonna on, get Lana. knocked out, Lana. Watch Lana. it. Roll a six! Oh, oh no! The opposite of a six, oh, man. <laughs> Lana is getting crushed over here. What I really liked about Charm City Blues was the way that the game had a mounting difficulty over the course of the game. So what at first looked like an easy case suddenly became a very difficult, very hard case. And that really echoes the way that noir movies unfold for me, where you're not sure where anything's going, and what seems easy at first becomes suddenly overwhelming and challenging. Right around the third card, I was like, how are we ever going to finish this? And that was cool. Have you tried not getting punched in the face? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll, this is an experienced police detective giving you I went in there twice and I got punched both times. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. In her defense, I went in there just once, but I got punched too. Someone's feeling very punchy at Metro's City <laughs> Credit Union today. I feel like the game really needs more flavor. I think our table was very into sort of role playing and storytelling, but if your table is not, then it won't be. There's a gin joint in town that our bank robber friend told us to scope out. In the corner, we find a made man from the old breed nursing a Manhattan. If you want info on this one, he says, you'll have to pay big. <laughs> so we need a drink, a cash, a cash, and a drink. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to get a leg up. I like where this is going. Yes. I get a leg up. Give me those precious hit points. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Just gonna use it right I'm now. gonna use it right <laughs> away. When I asked him how many different stories there are in the game and he told me three, I thought that was a little disappointing because if you play it a whole bunch of times, it's only gonna be new after three times, so. But I think it could do with like some expansions or something. We've been running around all day like a rabbit in heat trying to crack this one. The clues kept leading us from one place to the next, but they also keep going up. There's something more to this. I can feel it. Now it's time to start rattling cages. Nice. So we need a footprint, a footprint, a book, and an eagle. I think the judges are going to have some pretty serious problems with the lack of choice in the gameplay. Uh, the theme is nice, but the gameplay is really lacking right now. Um, and I'm going to try to get a leg up. And I don't. All right. And now a new encounter comes out. We got an encounter at the Cedar Room, so I think it's leg up time. I'm gonna try and get a leg up. Boy, did I roll a one. Okay, so I'm on top of a book, but I'm weak against books. <laughs> also, if I'm investigating one of the book cards, I have to roll the die before I even pull the card, and I can't use any leg ups. I think the judges will also hit on the incongruity of the story and flavor to the mechanics and how there needs to be more more flavor work done on the game. You've actually been better than most playtesters at clearing the encounters as you go along. Some people really just let them build up until you have like three hours left. And, and everything is covered and everything in encounters. Is covered. Yeah. That sounds brutal. <laughs> I also think the judges may uh, have some feedback about Ex balancing the difficulty ramp at the end. It feels really hard, and it's good to feel hard and not be quite so hard. Stop the presses! The shout echoes through the printing floor as the machines grind to a halt. The foreman races over to the entrance, fuming. After one look at the headline, his expression changes. Breaking news, Vice Squad sheds light on money laundering scheme leading to mayor, administration refusing to comment. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's the game. Fun. So I hope you guys enjoy playing it. Very yeah, much. Fun. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. I don't know how many hours I poured in front of the computer to get this stuff done. So this is just awesome to see it finally, finally looking like I want it to look. How many turns you sent out in there? Two in a row. <laughs> I think that this game would be easy to demo and would definitely attract a lot of attention. If failure demoralizes you and doesn't make you want to play anymore, the game is broken. Mm -hmm.